Hello everyone, I hope you and yours are well. Fall is a very popular time to install high tunnels, so I thought I would um, offer a short primer on siting, um, site selection for high tunnel installation. Uh, certainly we can follow up as needed on, on some of the details that might be missing in this overall uh, summary. And I'm using this format uh, primarily because it offers a change of pace and it might be a little bit more effective for us to get some uh, major points across. The first is that, um, just as a reminder, you know, high tunnel systems are, are very much driven by natural energy fluxes. The movement of uh, warm air to, to colder spots, the movement of higher air at higher pressure to uh, uh, air at lower pressure, the movement of warm to cold, uh, whether that be air to soil or soil to air. Regardless, uh, the, the high tunnel system is very much driven by these natural energy fluxes and that's very, very important to keep in mind as you move forward with installing a high tunnel because the location of that tunnel, specifically where it is located, um, you know, its site is a very, very important uh, uh, beginning piece in determining the outcomes that will, that will happen from using the tunnel. You know, obviously the, the site will have its own, you know, microclimate, if you will, that would be the weather here. Um, the decisions that you make um, will also help create the microclimates that exist in the tunnel. And then one of the other decisions that you're making in terms of which crops uh, and the varieties that you place in the tunnel, all of those together will lead to the outcomes that you experience with using the tunnel, which we hope um, are the best possible ones. So um, I just want to emphasize that siting the tunnel, uh, selecting the site for the tunnel, very much influences the success of its use. And I put in smaller font there, uh, you know, particularly in organic production, but it really extends um, across, the in, across the board in terms of production systems. The size selection is not important only in organic production. It's, it's important um, in every form of production. So a couple of general um, dues, uh, dues to consider. Um, check with your local zone, zoning ordinances about them because they may influence uh, the siting of your tunnel. High tunnels are often classified as temporary, um, but they still may require, uh, you may still need a building permit to install one. Having a CAUV uh, agricultural use uh, classification can certainly help, um, but it is not necessarily required, at least in my experience. But anyway, you're going to you're going to check with the local authorities on uh, any any uh, you know rules, regulations, policies that they have on on installation uh, site selection. You'll also want to review the soil map, the slope, the drainage, and all aspects of the history of the site. Remember, you're, built, you're, you're placing a building over soil, and then you're going to attempt to use that soil for many, many years to come. So the more you know about that parcel of land, the better off you are. Uh, complete soil testing, know, know what, what the history of that land has been. Use the best possible soil available, if possible. Um, you'll want to start off um, in, in that, uh, with that asset. You'll definitely need to check the water supply because as I'll emphasize in just a few minutes, the only water you want in the tunnel is the water you put there um, on purpose. And uh, I use the word portable here. I actually should use movable because we obviously can't place a, place a high tunnel in our pocket and carry it around. Um, I'm just alluding to the possibility of whether or not the site will accommodate a movable tunnel and therefore um, provide you with the advantages of, that, they, that they do. So in the next few minutes, look for um, the major uh, aspects or characteristics of an ideal high tunnel site to be highlighted there in white, kind of a white text box. The first being that the site needs to be very accessible. You'll need to be able to reach the site at nearly any time of day or night and any day of the year to manage um, the tunnel in some way. So having quick access to it is very, very important. There has been a history in some parts of Ohio and in other places not restricted to Ohio of tunnels being somewhat far removed from the home farm or from where the manager of the high tunnel will be. That is a, a, a really difficult situation to put the manager in. So when at all possible, have the high tunnel be very accessible. And yet also need, one also needs access to water, electric, uh, gas if, if needed, sheds, buildings, equipment, any other attribute, any other asset, any other input that will be needed for the tunnel also needs to be 
very much available. A frost proof hydrant can be a really big asset in the tunnel, but it is not essential. Uh, and of course that frost uh, proof hydrant can then connect with other uh, types of irrigation systems, both uh, drip and overhead. Look for a publication to come out from my group uh, in the near future regarding overhead irrigation and high tunnels um, can have some uh, uh, look for that publication. We'll, we'll describe a system uh, that we use and have newly installed and uh, you might be interested in. A high, an ideal high tunnel site is also very well drained. It is graded to divert the water if, if need be. You want to pay attention to where the water is flowing, you know, water is flowing downhill. If you're, if you're installing the high tunnel on a grade or a slope, you'll need to divert that water away from the tunnel before it reaches it. You'll also want to avoid any subsurface water, a natural spring, uh, poor internal drainage, any water that would come in, you know, come up to the surface of the tunnel inside from below that you do not want. You'll also want to design the high tunnel uh, siting, I'm sorry, you know, select the site for the worst case scenario. That scenario would be frozen ground, lots of and lots of rain and or snow melt. Where will the water go? You definitely do not want it to go into the high tunnel. And in that um, calculation, if you will, you'll simply want to be aware of how much water comes off the roof of a typical high tunnel and lands um, very much near the baseboards. And those baseboards are typically inches to very small number of feet away from your crop. So you'll want to have a plan uh, and have the system set up to divert the water that is coming off the roof of the high tunnel away from the tunnel so it doesn't cause damage inside. And as you know from farming, uh, regardless of uh, you're using a, uh, whether you use a high tunnel or open fields, that poor drainage has all kinds of negative effects. Uh, in the final analysis, it just creates a, a ton of headaches, and it doesn't lead to the outcomes that you that you want. So, um, and, and is and it's triply true, perhaps, in a high tunnel because uh, of the capacity for high tunnels to become flooded and. Uh, you know, just to create a, a situation that uh, you, you really, really want to avoid. So we often recommend to complete those drainage improvements before the high tunnel is installed, if at all possible, um, perhaps as the high tunnel is being installed, but certainly um, not try to retrofit the drainage of the high tunnel at all, uh, if at all possible. Perforated drain pipe along the baseboards can, can certainly help. Grading will definitely help. Creating a crowned, uh, a crowned like uh, situation inside the high, the high tunnel, much, much like an athletic field uh, is an advantage for many people. This is where the center of the high tunnel will be slightly higher than the edges of the tunnel and water that's in the tunnel will flow out and water that's coming towards the tunnel will not flow into it quite as easily. An ideal high tunnel site also has full exposure to the sun and it allows for good air movement while providing some protection from the most severe wind, if possible, but we can get into this in more detail. The general rule of thumb is to not place a high tunnel near any trees, buildings, or anything other, any other um, you know, component of the landscape that will re lead it to be shaded or reduce its access to, to really uh, proper airflow, which you will need to be successful. Relative to long axis of the tunnel, they're tip, the high tunnels are typically two and a half to three to one long um, uh, times longer than they are wide. So they're typically rectang rectangles and people often ask, do I orient them north, south or east, west? It really comes down to how you're going to use the tunnel. If you expect to want to use it or need to use it for all year round, especially for cropping and you know crop production and marketing from winter uh, from fall through winter into spring, you'll want to maximize the sun exposure throughout the entire year, in which case you would probably orient it north-south. Um, if you're very, very convinced that you're a summertime grower only, um, you can probably get away with either orientation, but keep in mind that a putting the long axis east-west and therefore exposing the southern wall to all of the sun of the summer will only lead it to become warmer and sunlight is not limiting during the during the summer months. A little graphic of this uh, is shown here. As the sun tracks across the sky, you know, day by day, month by week by week, month by month, 
you know that it will have um, your, your the crops in your tunnel will have different exposure um, to that sunlight, and that sunlight will be creating will be creating different uh, temperature profiles within the tunnel. So orient all things being equal, orienting the tunnel according to when you intend to use it and what crops you intend to grow in it is a, is a wise step to take. But the ideal site also needs to be um, uh, have adequate airflow. Certainly we want to protect against, you know, the coldest of wind in the winter. And we want at the same time providing, you know, an effective amount of space for, for um, other, all other operations that we have to do in, in the tunnel or outside the tunnel. We'll want to have space around the tunnel so that all of that can, can happen. Tunnels are single bay, one single rectangle or multi bay. Uh, multiple rectangles, uh, kind of side by side, hitched, if you will, at their long, you know, long edges. There are rules of thumb for how to orient those types of high tunnels, um, and so you can you can follow those. But again, in my experience, um, high tunnel orientation, whether it's north, south, east, west, both of them can work in Ohio very, very effectively. Often, the orientation comes down to other considerations, which we will get to here in just a moment. Again, windbreaks are okay but do not limit the uh, sun exposure or the air movement uh, whatsoever. Um, you, you want to have, again, free and clear access to all the sun that you can get most of the time, and certainly, <coughs> excuse me, certainly the, the wind as well. Keep adjacent high tunnels as far apart from each other as they are wide. This will help with shading, drainage, and airflow. It'll also help with snow removal, um, you know, repair, <coughs> maintenance, <coughs> excuse me, and other activities. We often recommend as well that to assume that the high tunnel facility will be expanded, either that one high tunnel will become a multi-bay, that one single bay high tunnel will become multi-bay, or additional high tunnels will be put placed on the same site. So if you're installing the first tunnel and you're looking at the site for doing that and the site might accommodate more, you will want to pay very close attention to the possibility for installing either more tunnels or more bays. So choose the site for the first one very, very wisely. And I'll give just a couple of pictures of this um, to il illustrate this point. The next set of, this set of pictures was taken on a fall morning at OARDC in Worcester. Each of the tunnels that you're seeing right here are 30 feet wide by 80 feet long. So they're about 11 feet tall in the center. And they are oriented east-west. So they're broadside to the south. And you'll notice on this morning that the tunnel on the left is casting a, a fairly long shadow. And uh, it's so long at, uh, that it, in time that shadow reached the tunnel that is 80 feet away shading it in the process, okay? Similarly, the tree on the right-hand side of the picture is casting shade that is going out perhaps 60 or more feet across the area that you see those uh, mid-tunnel frames uh, covering and then the high tunnel uh, close, uh, close by to that. Uh, that's prime time during the day when that tree that has not yet lost its leaves is shading that site in the fall time. And of course, it will also do so in the springtime at roughly the, it, its counterpart in the spring. So we wanna just be careful about where, you know, we're installing the tunnel and what is nearby. In the same way, this is a, a uh, 21 feet wide by 48 foot long high tunnel. So it's roughly only nine and a half feet or so in the center. Take a picture taken on the same day. This high tunnel happens to be oriented north south. So it's broadside to the east and west. And notice the length uh, of the shadow it is casting at this time of day uh, on, in the fall time there in Worcester. A high tunnel situated you know, within that shadow would be shaded by uh, the one that's shown in the picture. You can get a lot of help online very, uh, you know, from me, from other people as well. But if you're, if you're a kind of a self-starter and you would like to check a number of websites that will help you identify uh, where likely shadows, uh, where shadows are likely to be, you have a real good set of websites available to, uh, to help you in that process. There's some really good sources out there for identifying, uh, you know, identifying your location on a map, 
you know, placing a building at that location, uh, giving it a, a day and a time, and uh, and it will show you where the shadows uh, will be. And of course, um, we don't know much in this world <laughs> at some level, but we certainly know the sunrise and sunset for every day for many many days to come. So if you're if you're wondering when um, you know sunrise and sunset is on any particular day, it's sim simply a matter of looking that up. And with that information and a little bit more, you can you can actually sketch out through an entire year before you've built the tunnel where the shadows might be and then ask yourself, um, is that going to be okay? And then I'll wrap up here by just mentioning movable high tunnels. This picture was taken in Maine um, at Four Seasons Farm. Movable tunnels definitely have a place on some farms. Four Seasons Tools uh, offers, you know, uh, this particular design and actually will offer, uh, make a suggested rotation plan as well. So with four tunnels, you get 12 parcels. Farm Tech has a, uh, an excellent design as well that works on rails. Rimmel Greenhouses also has a number of movable uh, tunnels. Um, this, this particular one works on rails, but the one that we have at OARDC uh, pictured here is 30 feet wide by 50 feet long. Um, it actually can be moved with rollers, with uh, wheels, uh, and very, very easily actually by two to three people uh, in, a, in a relatively short period of time. We have a uh, video of this process at our website. If you have any trouble locating that, just let me know. I'll also point out that this uh, high tunnel has, uh, um, uh, as you'll see, a solar panel. That solar panel powers a battery, charges a battery that's in, uh, attached to the inside wall. That battery powers motors that, that roll the side curtains up and down and open and close the louvered fence at each end wall. And it powers an inflation fan, all with one solar panel and essentially one um, uh, over-the-counter battery. Very, very uh, elegant system, and we've been really, really pleased with it um, so far. Finally, the ideal high tunnel site, if it is newly worked, uh, has been allowed to settle. Uh, it's very, very important to allow the ground to settle after it's worked. If you choose to work the soil before you install the high tunnel, give it time to settle so your installation process will uh, come off without a hitch. So I hope this primer on selecting a high tunnel site has been useful. I very much uh, welcome uh, your getting uh, in touch with me to follow up on any uh, points that were made or not made uh, in, in, uh, in this overview. And I wish you continued good luck and I hope to see you very, very soon. Take care. This is how you can reach me in case you do not have my contact information.